welcome back. Uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the worldwide real estate market is, uh, is something that you know, it's tough to track down, obviously. And it's much easier to focus on what's going on locally because, hey, that's probably what matters to you. It's kind of what matters to me. Um, Kendra Todd joins us, CEO and managing broker of the Kendra Todd Group, which is ranked number four worldwide with Keller Williams. How are you? I am fantastic. And that really is worldwide, not Ben's world, but the actual (laughs) world, (laughs) which is round, by the way. That is way bigger than the things I know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming. And uh, so you got engaged. Last time I saw you, well, you were here maybe back over last summer. Yes, I think that's right. And and you got engaged. Lucky guy out there. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So... You know, when you start looking at the Seattle real estate market versus the national real estate market versus, I guess, the worldwide real estate market, they're pretty different. And it's tough to maybe come to conclusions about all three. But so you do have to kind of focus just locally, don't you? Uh, You're absolutely right. I mean, it it gets really confusing and, and, and overwhelming for the typical consumer when they turn on the news and um, they hear all of this sensationalism when it comes to real estate and housing and the economy and politics. And then they get the same thing, um, you know, just to a different degree when they read the Seattle Times or the local newspaper. Um, But the one thing that we do always need to remember is that real estate is inherently local in nature. And um, while it is important to follow and track the national trends in housing, um, Every market is fueled and driven by um, a unique set of factors. One of the things that I think is super fun about the Seattle area market is that we tend to lag about a year or two behind the national trend uh, for what's going on in other major metropolitan markets. So we can actually predict uh, with a fair degree of certainty where our market is most likely going to trend. Uh, 12 to 18 months out, which is really nice. Like, for example, when Arizona and California and Florida, when when the sky was falling in those markets, Chicken Little was <laughs> screaming, <laughs> he was running out. around with yeah, Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> I know, and, and, and Al Gore was giving himself awards saying, I told you Florida would be underwater, you know? <laughs> um, you know, Seattle prices were still holding pretty steady. But 24 months later... We were hitting our peak, and we were experiencing foreclosure rates to the degree that the the majority of other um, major metropolitan areas had already hit about a year year or two uh, prior. So what I think is really exciting about our market is the fact that, you know, we really have a fairly strong local economy. You know, we have one of the youngest, most educated workforces in the nation, We have all sorts of major international and multinational corporations that are based here. And our unemployment rate is statistically um, uh, lower than the national trend. Especially for college graduates. It's it's like 4% for college graduates in our city. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, you have to keep it in perspective. I know we were talking before the show started. I mean, I came here from Florida, and, I mean, it was like a bloodbath in real estate. I mean, we, we lost... I think soup to nuts, something where between 73% uh, percent, um, in, in value <laughs> from the beginning of the boom to the end of the crash. So, you know, losing 20 to 30% just, you know, seems okay to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I will take it. <laughs> I will take it. If that's like that's like a gash in the side instead of like trying to sew an appendage back on, you know. <laughs> it's a little less bloody. <laughs> so, you know, Steve was talking about, a lot of buyers out there are are not able to find the houses that they want. Do you think there's going to be more houses coming on the market soon? Well, you know, it's a really good question. And um, my honest answer is I really don't know. Um, You know, what's happening right now is uh, it's very, very simple. Um, The shadow inventory that everybody's been talking about for the last three years really does exist. It's just a matter of um, how the lenders are, you know, how they're going to dispose of it. And for the last few years, doing a short sale was probably one of the most painful experiences possible in real estate. I mean, I know people who were under contract um, on a short sale for a year and a half, only to have it fall apart. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, there's some real nightmare stories out there. Uh, they've really streamlined that process. 
Um, so you have a lot more homes that are actually um, being sold via short sale than foreclosure. Um, you have a whole bunch of um, investment funds that are buying up um, uh, portfolios of notes from lenders, and they're putting them into rental pools. Um, you've got all sorts of, uh, they're, they're trying all sorts of things behind the scenes. So as a result of that, we're seeing fewer and fewer properties actually going to foreclosure at a slower rate. Now, the number of uh, defaults has not dropped significantly. Simply, the disposition strategies have diversified. And so, basically, the bottom line is that we have, um, we have a shortage of available quality housing inventory. And we have buyers noticing that, starting to go frantic, seeing that interest rates are going up a little bit. They've done a really good job of, of, of creating... Um, uh, concern and frenzy when it when it comes to the mortgage rates, especially first quarter 2012, when they made that that they that big campaign announcement, basically that um, you know the basis points for Fannie and Freddie, you know, raised and therefore interest rates are going to raise and all this. And stuff. then they hit all time lows on Friday. Right, exactly. But <laughs> but people, weird to grab headlines and then it doesn't. Always I know come true. exactly, exactly. Uh, but the point is that there is a, there is uh, that 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 law of scarcity, and that's what's that's what's occurring right now. Is that there's just very little quality inventory out there. About uh, about sixty to ninety days ago, we really did hit a point in our market where boom, we hit bottom, and all of a sudden we woke up one day and we had multiple offers on our properties. And I mean, I we we sold over four hundred properties last year. So I like to think that just the volume of inventory that my group carries helps give us um, a, a fairly strong indicator of, of what the actual market activity is. And um, we, we have definitely uh, turned around, which is, which is really good news. So you guys are representing 400 properties, or last year you did, by well, buying and selling? Yes. La last year we, we closed over 400 properties in the Puget Sound area. Wow. And so now, do you, you, do you see that number staying steady, or were there more houses to purchase last year? Well, there was, there was definitely more inventory last year. And, I mean, if, if you think about it, I mean, the basic principles are, are very simple. Um, when, when you have um, uh, just a glut of inventory on the market, interest rates are low, there's more properties than there are buyers, um, people can take their time. Um, but when the inventory decreased... Uh, people became frantic and realized, oh, my goodness, I need to buy now. It has a lot less to do with interest rates and has a lot more to do um, with response to lack of inventory. Oh, well, you know, you, you said that law of scarcity, which I think, you know, people are afraid of missing the bottom the same way they're afraid of getting priced out. Well, if you try to hit the bottom, you'll miss it. It's a guarantee. You know, Warren Buffett uh, said many years ago, you know, smart money jumps into the market when everyone else is bailing out of the market. And, um, you know, it's very easy to really, really, um, ha you know, be, I don't even know how to put it, I guess, um, operating out of fear when you're listening to the headlines and you're listening to the sensationalism in, in the news instead of just keeping your eye on the market. So if you were waiting for the, the bottom of the market, folks, you, you missed it. Uh, but now is a great time to buy. I mean, think about it. It, it really is. I no, mean, I, let's be blunt. I just want to make sure we're, we're on the same page. Very blunt. I like it. <laughs> you, yeah, I don't beat around the bush. You missed it. Yeah, well, it's it's the truth. <laughs> if 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 you're trying if you're trying to find the bottom, good luck with that. I mean, you know, very very few people do, and 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 you know, the smart investors, those who make billions, they you know they buy why the, why the market is still declining, and when the market starts to go back up, that's that's when they they stop and they just they start to to watch. Well, and it's there's this element I think of groupthink that goes on, whether it is with the whether it's because of newspaper or media or whatever it may be, that now it's okay. So because your friend just bought a house, okay, I guess it's okay for me to. And that isn't necessarily financially the smartest thing to do, but it makes people feel more comfortable. Yeah. Well, here, here's the silver lining from, from my perspective, because we, I mean, we handle all facets of residential and commercial real estate, but our big focus is on distressed properties and distressed homeowners. <laughs> um, if, if you or your property is distressed, please visit our website, <laughs> savedfromforeclosure.com. Actually, that is our one of our websites. Is it saved yeah. from foreclosure? Yeah, savedfromforeclosure.com. The reason I want to point people to that website and to our company is because 
the, our, our market has definitely hit our bottom. But we have um, a large percentage of borrowers who are significantly underwater um, um, in, with, with, with their homes. And what, when that, what that means, being underwater on your mortgage, means that you owe more or your loan amount is higher than the, act- or than the current value of your property. So, for example, if you bought a home back in 2004 and you have a loan for $200,000, but today your home would sell for $180,000, then we would consider that being underwater on your mortgage. So the reason that we're really focusing on um, on distressed buyers right now is because the market has turned. So even if you are underwater on your mortgage, you have a high likelihood of being able to sell your home quickly. And with all of the um, uh, advances um, that have occurred in successes that have occurred with uh, streamlining the short sale process, not only will you be able to sell your home quicker, but the bank is more likely to accept that short sale, and they will also close uh, close that short sale quicker. So now is the perfect time for anyone who is underwater on their mortgage to contact us and short sale their home so that they can avoid foreclosure. Well, and I think to your point, it's at some point at some point in time, you know, you talked about the housing market here maybe being down thirty percent. It's tough to hang on. I mean, you're still paying on a mortgage, and I'm of the thought that you have to make smart decisions for yourself. It's just like when you're out buying a house, you have to buy it right. And if, you, if you're in a position where you have to sell it, well, you have to sell it right. And you can't, you can't waste all your resources trying to keep something that isn't maybe working for you. It, exactly. And it, I mean, it's been very, very hard over the last couple of years for all of us, you know, here today to have watched people who desperately, you know, needed to sell their homes, but they couldn't. They tried to short sale it, sat on the market for nine months, there were no buyers, too much inventory, and banks didn't want to do short sales. But now this, that's all changed. So I, 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 think it's, I, I think it's really, really encouraging, this turnaround in the market, um, and particularly for those who have been in trouble, because now there's hope that they can actually avoid foreclosure. I, I'm always looking for the silver, silver lining, so... So of course I've got to I've got to give us a, a shameless little plug. And, and, and if you are underwater with your mortgage, if if you are curious about what your options are, please visit our website savedfromforeclosure.com. There you go. And I don't know why they always call the shameless plug, but that's a whole other conversation, isn't it? Again, yeah. that is that is Kendra Todd uh, with the Kendra Todd Group and uh, savedfromforeclosure.com, a great resource for you. Uh, if you do need to potentially uh, sell your house at a time that, hey, it might actually sell at a time at a pace that's faster than it would have before. Hey, thanks for joining us. And uh, stick around for the end of the hour. Absolutely. We'll chat a little bit more. Uh, up next, you know, a lot of people have been thinking about pa- paying for their house. And a lot of people maybe aren't happy with the way their mortgage payment is going. There's a lot of ways you can lower it right now. Ryan Leopold's going to join us. We're going to talk about low interest rates and what they may mean for you. We'll be right back. 